Smurfs always win. Today, we're playing Comp 2v2 against a C3 GC duo. The catch? Well, my teammate here is a peak diamond too. And he's from Europe and we're QNA East. So if I don't solo carry these games, we will lose. Instead, to make sure we can't lose, I'm going to show you the strategies I use to climb rank guaranteed, all without needing Zen level consistency or crazy mechanics. Or maybe I'll just get rocked in these games and you'll get to laugh and make fun of me in the comments. Either way, win-win for you. This is episode two of the Educational Smurf. I just got word Monday from our coaching sponsor, the GCB, that they have almost 200 students enrolled and are at 60% capacity before they sell out. If you don't know, the Grand Champ Bootcamp is Rocket League's largest 12-week live training program set up to take incoming plat, diamond, and champ rank players to GC in 90 days or less. When you join, you're immediately plugged in to a network of over 3,000 competitive players, and you take a benchmark test to assess your unique skill set before you're paired with a best fit private coach. So if you're hard stuck or are just sick of having to try to climb solo queue, DM our sponsor, the Grand Champ Bootcamp, over on Discord with the keyword Smurf to learn more about coaching. I'll have their Discord first link below. That's keyword Smurf. And enjoy the games. Okay, so as you requested in episode one, I'm gonna add some replay analysis back into the games to sort of explain some of the things that I was trying to explain, but struggling to in real time. If you have more ideas for how to make these better, let me know, let's check it out. All right, jumping into episode two, the goal is to show you that even if you don't have perfect mechanics, which <laughs> I definitely will not, if you play the map like a GC, you can win. Let's do it. Kidson's going to go for the kickoff. Oh, and one last note that I may not have told you in the intro. Sinless and Chasm on the opposing team are in voice comms. And Kidson and I, since I'm commentating, are not in comms. So this is basically solo queue versus party queue. And you're going to see why that's important very shortly. We'll cheat up here, as always. He's going to be a little, little slow to the kickoff, but that's fine. I'm going to try to play side boost. Ethan has that same idea, Chasm. Uh, but luckily, because I saw him go for side boost before me, we're going to get an open net. Going for side boost is... Yeah, so not much to say here. I mean, the ball's too close to his side, so we just get a freebie. The the decision here is quite straightforward, but uh, I want to talk more about these kickoff situations in a second. So pause right here. While nothing crazy is happening in these plays yet, something that I want you to pay attention to if you're below Grand Champ, and this is a big difference that you'll notice in 2v2 especially is the speed to the first decision after kickoff one of the quickest ways i can spot somebody's 2v2 rank in like a guess your rank video is how quickly they decide what to do after the kickoff happens notice how this kickoff goes to the side where am i positioned versus where is sinless positioned who's just a rank or two below me on the enemy team right your speed and your ability to decide to go for boost, to decide to go for the ball, to decide whether you need to make a stall touch or whether you should play aggro immediately after the 50-50 at the kickoff happens will determine half the goals that get scored in 2v2. So focus on these first decisions. And if you're ever watching a higher ranked player, pay attention to the speed and what they actually do immediately after the kickoff when they're second man. We'll see some more examples soon, but I thought it was worth mentioning. A race to the side boost and we should have a one-on-one -on -one here. So I'm gonna hit it down. And like, as you see, because I make a quicker decision to go for side boost, our team starts on offense and they're back on defense and that like this is what gives you an advantage in 2v2 in 1v1 you just want to win the kickoff but this is what gives you an unfair advantage in 2v2 speed to the first decision after kickoff try to time this up bounce and now maybe we can go for an air dribble bump kind of missed the air dribble bump uh which is unfortunate so now we got to get behind our teammate as soon as possible gonna watch a double tap here just keep it in the corner and recover watch another shot it should be all right. He's going to get a decent clear here. And you already start to see some of the difference in skill level of Kidzen versus like Chasm, for example. And by the way, if I'm ever critical of people in these replay analysis, it's not to make fun of, but it's to highlight things that you can improve. So in my rank games, after I make this clear here, I've just made two saves, right? So I save this ball off backboard. We get another shot on net and I save it here. So I'm expecting, after I finish my flip here, for my teammate to be able to recover faster and follow up. So 
notice how I, I will naturally kind of drift away from this play and wait for my teammate to follow up. I quickly realize that Kidzin's recovery is slower. And so even though I just made two saves, Kidzin is not ready to save, not ready to clear this ball. And when you're playing with a lower ranked teammate, this is not necessarily, I mean, it's less than ideal um, and it's not what you want, but it's something to be aware of. So if you're playing with a lower ranked teammate, be prepared to play the ball two, three times, even with low boost, because you can't rely on a low ranked teammate to bail you out. And you're going to notice how my gameplay changes. I'm going to start playing much more on the ball very quickly as the minutes progress. But if you ever get this feeling, right, like your teammate is slow, like that you might get this in game. What that means is you need to play low boost and play central on the field more. You can't get away with like going for side boost here like I'm about to again and again if your teammate's slow. So just something for you to think about while you play as well. All right, I'm going to pass it back to Kidzen. If I, and then a little, little small note, but whenever you're doing a pass to a teammate, right, it's a single jump and then you flip after versus flipping into the ball and, you know, potentially outplaying your own teammate. Should give him an easy time on it and I'm going to wait back. Uh, this ball is going to come to me. I'm going to hit it to the side on an angle. I need to beat two defenders here. So we're going to have to have power slide cut and then go around them. Not the best execution from me. Um, it'll almost lead to a goal. Uh, all right. So this play here, I know I'm stopping a lot, but I want to explain this stuff and what I'm actually thinking when I'm doing this, because I get the question a lot from lower ranked players like Luke. I don't know what to do when I get the ball. Every time I get the ball, the opponent's monkey challenge. So if you feel like that in your game, pay attention to what I do here. After I see my teammate gets a beat here, right? And they have two guys back. This is a, this, you, it might look like, oh, I have a great, you know, situation here. And a lot of players would just take this ball if you're low ranked and just shoot it on that. But I don't do that. And the reason is because technically I am in a 2v1 here. There are two opponents back and my teammate is overcommitted up front, right? So notice how instead of booming this ball away, I'm making a soft touch on an angle to buy time for my teammate to get boost and get back. Then instead of going for like a flick, right? Or a carry, a flick, even if I get it over one defender, even if I get it over Chasm, Sinless is going to be back to defend, right? Or even if I get it over, over, over Sinless, Chasm is going to be back to defend. So instead, I'm dribbling this on an angle so I can see all the challengers as they approach. And then, although my execution is a little shoddy, it's a cut on one to, to, to beat the first and then try to go for a shot on the second. Now, what you'll see ends up happening is I cut. I realize he's going for a demo on me, so I have to jump to dodge the demo, and my execution isn't great. But even so, I want you to understand, even though it looks like my play is simple, there's a reason I'm choosing that play. And when you're getting the ball in game, I want you to look how many defenders are there in front of me and where's my teammate. And then you decide how fast you can play, right? It's not, I get the ball, I go for an air dribble every time, or I get the ball, I go for a flick every time. It's look at the defenders, then decide what space you have and what mechanics you can pick from, right? And if I have space and time, I'm bounce dribbling, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Fast execution from me. And then a small detail here, whenever you're in the corner, don't jump on your challenges because why? Well, one, the ball's going to 50-50 middle, but also I can instantly rotate back and we're, we're going to be better off. Unfortunately, Kidzen's a little bit lower ranked. Like I would have liked to see my teammate here control this pass after I, after I center it maybe make a soft touch, then go for a shot on Sinless, right? Like, look at all the space Kidzen has, and he's just immediately shooting. If he makes a soft touch and then goes for a flip, he could score the seat more easily, but that's just the difference between low rank players and high rank players. Low rank players take the shot whenever they can take the shot, whereas high rank players make sure the shot's gonna go in. They make it more quality, right? I'm just gonna assume he's missing because he's too close to the wall there to, to get an angle. And uh, now we're gonna play this slow. All right. Same thing again. What Now that you understand how I think, look at what I'm doing when we get the play. Oh, once again, hit it to the side, cut in. That's by one. Now we have a bounce dribble. And uh, don't finish it the best, but that should have been a goal. As you can see, execution isn't great, but it's the thought that counts. Well, and then blocking shot, and that should come back middle. And we should be able to carry this in. Uh, he early challenges, which is fine. So I'm picking up here that chasm is kind of the fast one on the opposing team he's he's going for early challenges again and again and so if you're feeling this pressure you're gonna have to adapt and you'll see how i start to uh i start to play when i have the ball and i see chasm coming first ball here and at least get a 50 get a 50 on him and now we're just looking for demo 
Demo probably isn't the best play to go for here. Looking back, I, sh I should have just gone for a shot. My rule generally, and I didn't follow it here, is if the opponent is same side as you, shadowing you, bumps are really good. Whereas if the opponent is back post, shots and bounce dribbles are better. So just by that rule alone, if the opponent's farther, I should be going, I should be taking this midfield and then cutting around for a shot as opposed to like going for this bump here. This bump is like super optimistic. It's yeah, it's not, not going to happen. Probably could have done better by just trying to score, but that's all right. He'll play it into the corner and now we're going to rotate back. Stop the ball. I want my teammate to go, but um, I will keep going if the opportunity presents itself. And okay, now we're playing back for a second. Luckily, Ethan misses, so we can take this ball to the air, get one soft touch. And uh, I looked for an air dribble bump, but he never challenged me, so we should be fine. There are a lot of options. And so here, now you see why the air dribble bump works, right? Because he's same side as me, if he challenges the ball, he's getting bumped. And if he doesn't challenge the ball, well, it's going in. By the way, if you want to be smurfed on as well, the opponents and my teammate here are all volunteers from the coaching sponsor of this video, the Grand Champ Bootcamp. So if you want to get pings and have a chance to play against me, that's another reason to consider reaching out to the Grand Champ Bootcamp team. Once again, that Discord link is first linked down below. Oh, and by the way, if you don't have money for coaching, totally fine. The Discord I run called The Training Club, which is actually Rocket League's largest improvement Discord, is separate from the coaching sponsor, and it's completely free to join. So if you're looking for teammates or just want some free training resources, check out our training club discord. We've got over 50,000 members. It's completely free to join and you can leave whenever you want. So if you haven't yet, go poke around and see what it's about. I could reset. I could air dribble bump. I expected him to challenge off the wall. So I thought the bump would be better. But uh, the key there is the soft first touch, right? We'll go for this flip forward. Let's try to get a 50. Luckily, going to lose it back to him, which is nice. He misses corner boost. <laughs> well, we're cool. Going to play behind. He looks a little awkward, so I, I turn a little early. Normally, I'd play more back post, but he's going to get demoed, so I'm going to play back here. Challenge early because Sinless does get a little bit of a heavy first touch, and so does Ethan. So here's the thing, guys. Low rank players have bad first touches. So you can shadow. You can get away with playing a little more aggressively. Like on your shadows, you don't have to give them as much respect. Uh, and that's just how you should play. Like, everybody complains like, oh, you know, these plats, these diamonds, they're just early challenging me. They're just getting lucky. Well, no, they're early challenging you because you have bad control of the ball. If you had good control of the ball, they would be respecting you, <laughs> right? Shadow defending here so close. Or the reason that, that you need to shadow defend sometimes and not go back post is because when champs make those heavy touches, if you're playing back post, you can't challenge them. Like, you can't punish them for it. But... The reason I'm able to punish them for those heavy touches and, and quickly go is because I'm playing so close, right? So when they make that heavy touch, I'm there to, I'm there to. So I like, I, I actually want to highlight this play. I know it sounds silly. A lot of times you'll notice when I get the ball in the opponent's corner, I go for this play right here. It's the sort of just bail on ball and look for bumps. Because especially when I'm playing at a disadvantage and I know my teammate is, you know, kids in over here is lower rank. I don't want him to be the last man back, right? So this situation where the ball's in the corner, like if, maybe if it's my rank, like I'm trying to take this up, I'm trying to doomsie dish, I'm going for something more aggro. But since I'm just trying to play safe here, I'm like, shit, the ball's in the corner. I'm not going to be able to score from here. Might as well just get behind and let my diamond teammate fight for it. Uh, that way I can cover his back. And so that's exactly what we awesome. do. Problems. In any case. I'm going to play back here. This ball looks like it's high. He's not going, so I can kind of just hit it to keep it in, right? And I'm just going to continue to hit it and keep it in. I'm not I'm not trying to spike the ball at the net super fast because I always want to be able to rotate back uh, quickly when I'm playing at a rank disadvantage, right? And buy time for my teammate. Kidzen should have that. Sign of a lower rank player. <laughs> I'm not trying to spike. If kids in here grabs our corner boost, this play is really good for us. Blue is super overextended because after Chasm dumps this ball here, right? Sinless is committed upfield. He just flipped. Chasm is committed upfield with a low boost and I just play the ball to my teammate. So now we have basically a, a 2v2, but we have initiative and we have, we have the boost advantage. But because kids in misses this boost, it's massively bad for us because now Chasm can interfere and he's going to get early challenge and then Sinless is going to get free ball here and it's just not good that he doesn't have any boost so i'm going to keep moving forward here normally i wouldn't play so far forward 
but I know Kid's in his low boost there. So I, I, I'm expecting him to not be able to go soon after this play ends, which means I need to be ready to clean up and it'll just lead to a goal. Cheat up here. They're looking for a demo. He hits it out. They're going to play it into the corner. I do have to watch for their third. He hits it a little too hard, so they're not going to have an opportunity here. Unfortunately, Kidzen, double agent, sends me flying. <laughs> but that's all right. I dodged sinless. I wasn't ready for Kidzen. That's all right. That, that, that happens. That's the whole point of this. We'll go down a goal. I'll cheat up. He gets a good 50. It's going to go off Sinless. Sinless is going to see, like, I know I pointed this out at the start of the video, and I, I forgot what happened in this gameplay, but pay attention to the kickoff outcomes. The decision that the second man makes, this first touch after the kickoff, decides, like, half the goals in rank 2v2. So notice how, because Sinless gets a bad first touch here, he, gets, he gives control a ball, and, you know, now we have an opportunity to score. Don't convert it, but, uh... Kidzen almost does. Kidzen almost just started carrying me. Chasm should have here. Notice I'm saving my second flip in case he tries to go high or low. I can use that flip to adjust. And Chasm looks like he has it here. So I'm just going to play behind my teammate. I can challenge there, but that means everything's up to Kidzen. And I'd, I'd rather be the one second back, right? I'd rather be second back. I'll let you listen to my voiceover for a little bit here because the voiceover explains this play well. I'd rather be second back. Then, uh, then leave kids in, in, in the 1v1. There, I, I see Sinless is awkward, so I'm just waiting for him. I'm gonna play low 50. Keep low 50-ing. Just gotta control this boost and we should be all right. He kind of coughs ball away. Kids in almost gets scored on there. I almost leave, I almost leave him back alone. That would have been my fault. We can play it up to him and that's almost a goal. And not a bad play here. We should have got scored on. That should have been my fault. But once again, I just want to highlight what separates a diamond from a champ. This is like the third time that I've seen kids and do this. So I just want to highlight it for you guys. Not, not to ridicule him, but if you know what I'm talking about, right here. Kidson has space. I play the ball up to him with a soft touch. And what does he do? Immediately rips the shot. Like, and is the shot bad? No, it's not a bad shot. But if we rewind just three seconds, any high ranked player knows that 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 a shot from this distance, like look where you are in the field, is not going in against somebody who's back post, right? So just once again, lower ranked players, when you get the ball with space, use it. Don't just rip the shot because you have the shot because you might think it's good, but a good player is just going to make the save and then take possession back. And you're not going to get away with just firing, you know, mediocre shots on net all the time not trying to expose kids in here but if this happens to you in your games you know pay attention give it some thought my fault we can play it up to him and that's almost a goal here uh i see kids in committed up so i'm just gonna wait back right buy some time let him do his thing now he signals he wants to go behind me so maybe we can get a pinch there not quite but it'll work out regardless and uh kids in looks a little awkward so i'm gonna I'm going to jump to block shot there. It's probably probably not the best play, but that's all right. Just continuing to use single jumps to block shots, right? And uh, not, not... This should basically result in game. Playing slow in the corner, going to wait out time, and we should make it through this game. I'm kind of just out, out sped the opponents. I was just driving faster. But what I will say is to like do that, like sure, recoveries are part of it, but a lot of it is also just not committing as first man. That way I can bust it back and cover for kids in. We'll get into game two. Hopefully that wasn't too dominant. Hopefully that was helpful, but you'll see Sinless and Chasm. I remember they start to adapt a little bit. So this one's going to be tougher. Poor kids in on 128 ping. What a trooper. Maybe that's why he's ripping shots from half field. We'll see. I'll play behind. Cheat up here, play second. Kidzen's going to hit it into the corner. And uh, I just want to buy time for him to rotate back here because I know he's low boost. I want him to go for corner boost. He doesn't, which makes me a little bit nervous. So I really need to guard shot. Yeah, corner boost is still there, which is a little strange. Uh, but that's all right. I'm going to stay in net because he has no boost and he's just sitting on the front post. Uh, so we just have to cover for him and make sure he stays safe. That's my bad. That's just my bad. But I was like, I'm trying to buy time for Kidzen to like rotate around. Uh, and get some boost or something, but 
Uh, sh shouldn't go to that length to do it. That's just excessive. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just just watch the first half of this game. Reset. Zero, zero. We'll go for kickoff. I'm going to get a decent one. Kidson looks like he's going back for corner boost, so I kind of just want to get in the way. and We might get scored on here. That's all right. Kidson's going to have... I see Sinless flipping, so I'm driving in to kind of interfere. And I'm trying to cut this across for my teammate, potentially. Uh, and just create some angles, right? When the ball was going too far in a straight line. Let's listen to the gameplay for a bit. I can split it up. This is going to bounce back middle. Oh, kind of like hit off the bottom of the post. Unfortunate. All right, I'm going to play for side boost here. Let's get a good 50. And now that I'm in front of the ball and my teammates committed upfield, I'm just going to control this into my corner and try to play as slow as possible. Block the angles, block the shots. And just keep the ball in my corner as long as possible. Not get bumped. While I'm here and reset. I'm gonna keep the bounce on this ball as best I can. And that should lead to a oh unfortunate. Almost leads to a goal. That's alright. Kids So the play here is good. Keep um, the ball in my corner as long as possible. Not get bumped while I'm here. And reset. Going back on this play, what I want to highlight here and what makes or breaks this play for low rank players is this touch right here. If you mess up this touch, you just knock the ball down and it rolls. And if you get this touch right, you have this beautiful bouncing bouncing dribble here that you can use to outplay the first defender and score on the second, which is what I go for. Unfortunately, I'm not sure why Kidzen isn't going for a shot here. Maybe it's just like he doesn't have the mechanics to be able to hit this, but if you're Kidzen here, uh, there's no reason not to go for the shot. I don't know what to say. You just have to score this ball. It's a goal. That's all right. Kids and gets beat, so I, I'm gonna have to step in here and get in the way. I get a bump on him, which is good. I let Chasm keep hitting it. This is just recentering, so I have to watch shot. And I'm checking to see if anybody's going. Nice, nobody's going, so I can control maybe. So this will play it off to the side. I can maybe hit it up. Try to block his shot if need be. Once I do see my teammate get demoed, I assume he's going to Sinless is going to panic and play for an early flick, so I'm slowing it down. I'm just playing for a low 50 here. I know Ethan has been early challenging a lot, so waiting, looking for uh, the low 50. So I'm gi giving him enough time to come back. That way I can play the ball here. One soft touch. I'm just trying to clear the way with bumps. I am spamming air dribble bumps a lot. But like, I know that we're at a big disadvantage in these lobbies and if I don't score every one on one. <laughs> and also another reason that I'm spamming air dribble bump so much, like looking back, it's these guys positioning. Like if they have one guy on the backboard, air dribble bump never works here. But because players aren't like, if you go off the backboard, it's much harder to get bumped, right? But you know, low rank champ players aren't going to get air, air dribble bumped on a lot. So notice how both these guys are playing grounded, which makes air dribble bumps much better for me. Much easier, at least. Because they, they just can't save it. Spamming air dribble bumps a lot. But like, I know that we're at a big disadvantage in these lobbies. And if I don't score every one on one, <laughs> then we're not going to win. <laughs> so hopefully that's okay. We'll cheat up here. Ball goes to the side. I just need to get back and watch shot here. This is going to be a one-on-one. -on -one. He gets a heavy first. So luckily that'll buy some time. Just watch the pinch. Watching the center here. Making sure we don't get completely bumped. Complete. One last thing I'm going to highlight is I'm always playing slow in the corner. Like that's a big difference. My speed, of, like my pace of play. It's not that I'm playing faster all the time than these guys. It's I'm playing faster when it counts. I'm playing faster in the midfield, faster on offense. But when the ball's in the corner, like I'm actually playing way slower. Than most of these champ players so think how you would play the corners and and maybe try to pull a little bit of what's working in this game you know into yours completely boomed out of the way and try not to commit too hard so that way we can be back for kids in if he does get beat nice ball goes to the side so I'll roll up the wall i should be first here nobody's challenging me so i'm gonna let it bounce and then take to the air and what am i going for air dribble bump all day didn't get the best setup there, but if I get a one-on-one, -on -one, I am pretty much always air dribble bumping. Because at least then if I lose control of the ball, I can at least bump them, right? Gonna keep this in the corner. Teammate should have. He plays it a little too much to the side, so I'll get a redirect to at least keep it, keep them on their toes. 
And this will come back at me. I'm trying to dodge demo here. They are coming up. Looks like the orange team has come up with a new strategy. It involves a lot of demoing me. <laughs> Heavy first touches from orange. That's our, honestly our saving grace. Like we haven't had to play too much defense just because orange makes such heavy first touches like all the time like i'm talking about like this right here ball comes off the wall here like if this first touch is like i i get there like in an awkward spot but if this first touch is better they have a 2v1 on me but because they're chaotic they're allowing me a chance to get out of this one-on-one -on -one with an early challenge and that's been that's bailed me out of like almost every one-on-one -on -one situation in this game i haven't even had to shadow because champs don't have good first touches and i can just challenge and slow down by time all right <laughs> we'll play back let's watch center stodging demo because i see sinless hunting i don't have any boost so i can just hit it high and then maybe follow up for a shot i have no boost here so i'm just trying not to commit right and keep rotating around as much as possible teammate gets demoed so i'm gonna wait back here try to hit it around one and maybe i can outplay the second my teammates there yes <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping Kidson would get there in time. We're good. In these situations, like when I'm when I'm challenging from the corner there, my angle is so tight, it's almost impossible for me to score on sinless. Yeah, and actually listen listen to what I'm what I'm saying here, because this explains my thought process well. In these situations, like when I'm when I'm challenging from the corner there, my angle is so tight, it's almost impossible for me to score on sinless. So better is just play backboard, play to get the ball around him, play not to uh not to just throw the ball away. And sometimes that's your best option. Kidzen gets a great dem or bump. I'm going to let this bounce middle and then go quick. And once again, sometimes better than scoring is just getting the beat. Fake. Almost. That's going to go high up wall and it'll bounce a little mid probably. So we're just going to watch shot. As long as we cover the angle here, we're okay. There's no threat. As long as we keep it in the corner and cover the angle. Do let Kidzen get attacked, but uh, the angle's so small that we should be fine. Once again, I'm just... I'm not full committing there. Like I see the ball kind of center, but just drive challenging. Don't want to full commit. Here I'll hit it up the wall and I do have time to go for a shot. Even that before. shot is less to go in, but more just to buy time, just so you know. I know I was giving kids in some flack for taking bad shots and you know, sometimes you do just need to buy time. And one of the best ways to buy time is just put the ball above the backboard and make it awkward, right? So, you know, shots do have a purpose like that, but weak shots on, you know, the ground are very costly. So it's, it's sort of different. Back in time, if my teammate does kind of throw a ball away, that's okay. Stay on the right side of the challenge. And I don't think I have an angle there, so I'm just not rushing anything. Not playing too crazy. And that'll be game two. We'll do one. I don't think we'll have time for one more. Let me let me know if you guys want to see three, but I think top takeaways for your games. I want you to focus on speed to your first decision, getting ball control after kickoff. I want you to focus on using space when you have it, especially using bounce dribbles over like say flicks and air dribbles. I want you to think about maybe holding off on shots unless you know they're going to go in and just play for beats in the opponent's corner, right? Don't just rep a shot just because you have one. Kids in throwaway possession a couple times there. And if I wasn't caring as hard as I would, not to sound like an ass, uh, <laughs> that would have cost us more. And then last thing, think about when you can buy time in your corners, specifically on defense, be patient. Use single jumps, right? Let opponents come to you and don't try to force the ball out of your corner because that's how you recenter and get scored on. Join the Discord for a chance to be in these videos. Let me know if I could do these better in any way, whether you want voiceover, replay analysis, whatever it might be. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in episode three of the Educational Smurf. Vote on the next rank. As you know, I'll be reading the comments the first day they come out. And thanks so much for watching.